Welcome to the Right Reality Podcast. My name is Mixie. And my name is Steven. And Mixie, we are here for the very first episode of Season 2 All-Star Shore. We made it! Air yes. horns everywhere! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I am pumped as fuck, you guys. I have been waiting for this since the last episode of Season 1. We were told it was happening. And we waited, and we were so patient, and we were so good. We were the best good little people that, that have ever waited in our lives. And we got the reward of All-Star Shore Season 2, the first episode. I can't wait to dive into it, Steven. Uh, we were very good. You were right. We we definitely did not continually continue. continue wait, I, I'm so excited. I, can't even I know, I know, we, I get it. We definitely it. didn't just keep messaging the person who said, hey, there's a season two happening. We definitely didn't like, when is it coming? When is it coming? We were good. We didn't do that. <laughs> no, so, that would no, be no, annoying. No. And that's not what we do. That's not what we do here. But we are here for episode one of All Star Shore season two, pornography on television. <laughs> I don't think that was the title. I, I don't think, although it should have been, it would have huh? been a great, really encompassing first episode title. I don't think that was the episode of the first, or the the name of the first episode. Okay, uh, give me give me give me another shot here. I, I'm ready to take another shot of the episode name. Okay, okay here we you ready? Go. Okay, we are back. It is season two, episode one. What is it called, Stephen? Who's ready to party? <laughs> I am, and that is the right name of the episode. And holy shit, was it great! You guys, if you are just now finding us, welcome. You are in for an absolute treat. This might be the most passionate I've ever been about a television show in my life. I think it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to TV. <laughs> um, thank you for finding us. Tell your friends. We're also on YouTube. I'm waving to you if you're seeing me on YouTube. Hi. But if you're not, Hi. you're not seeing this. Go to YouTube. Subscribe. We'd love to see you there. Um, but tell your friends. Watch the show. I want to get into it, Stephen. I want to get Let's into it go. Now. It is so exciting to have the All-Star Shore back. I'm excited about the people. It, it wouldn't be a good season of All-Star Shore if you didn't have some Brits where you kind of didn't understand what they were saying. We love that. Yeah. Oh, I do. We have an elephant in the room that we need to address. Okay. We typically, before we start a show, do Smash or Pass. Yes, we do. And you might be thinking, where was the Smash or Pass for All-Star Shore? And if you think back to season one, you'd be like... They didn't do a Smasher Pass for season one either. Why is that? Because anyone that is on All-Star Shore is an automatic smash. It would be a pointless episode of us just saying we're smashing everybody. Yeah. You want us to go, these people aren't hot and lie to your face about it? Of course. <laughs> we. I mean, we can do that for you if you'd like. I mean, do you want to look at the cast list right now? Here we go. Smash, 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 times 12. Thank you very Speed much. Run. Thanks for coming. What a great episode. We'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah, there you go. Steven just did it for us. Incredible. So I did want to address that. Uh, no Smash or Pass because everyone is a Smash. And we see why immediately. Now, this season starts a little different than last season. Um, last season, we had everybody running out Baywatch style on the beach. This season, there's a pirate ship. Why? Why? Who fucking cares? That is why this show is great. <laughs> because it's All-Star Shore. Like, I want you, if you were just finding All-Star Shore for the first time because you found us for a while, I want you to remember that when you ask why are they doing this and when we ask those questions on, like, Temptation Island, the challenge, that doesn't apply here. Yeah, it doesn't. That logic needs to go out the effing window mm -hmm. because this is All-Star Shore and we don't question anything they do because they know what they're doing so when you go oh what are they you need to realize you need to shut your gd mouth and just <laughs> sit back and watch that's all you have to do be entertained by them the pure chaos of the beginning of this episode was only rivaled by the the chaos in the middle and the chaos at the end um i loved the fact that we were we got four minutes into the episode we only got a, about a 30 second introduction of Vinny and everyone else was just there and we started the first challenge four minutes Great. in I want Great. every reality show to take notes we can learn about these people as we start the first challenge this is what we want we came to watch 
people that are wildly unathletic and will be hung over for the rest of this show to try to do something semi-athletic. That's why we're here. It's one of the reasons why we're here. We're also here for porn, which we get later. But it's why we're here. And you need to be taking notes, everybody else. It is it is amazing how they start the show. We're in Columbia this season. Vinny, within, I think, two seconds on being on camera, he Sweat. was like just absolutely shitting all over Angelina's from last year. <laughs> And I was like, this is what I need. This is my boy. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you so much for this. We we learned Marnie's accent might be something we will never be able to figure out what she's saying. And I don't care. I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. The other thing I want to talk about, Mixie, Chase happened to be wearing a very nice watch to All-Star Shore. Oh, was Chase aware of what show he was coming to and why he shouldn't be wearing a watch? That's what I want to know. That's the main thing leaving this episode that I want to know. I am shocked that you saw anything from Chase other than his abs. Well. Because I honestly couldn't tell you if he spoke this episode. Every time I see him, my eyes just go down a little bit, and it's just this perfectly chiseled body out of this man. I mean, he clearly is a manifester. We know that. Oh, I'm sure he manifests. I personally, yeah. oh, I also want to touch on last season, we had Polly G as our DJ overseeing us. Um, and now we have the meatball. We got Snookers, Snickerooski on the ones <laughs> and twos and crushed it immediately. However, I will say out of the gate, I think they missed the opportunity of having Polly D be our VO guy, our North Star, if you will, again, while his boy Vinny was on the show. And just all the things he could say about Vinny and the voiceover that Vinny could not respond to. I think that's a missed opportunity. But you know what? Here I'm thinking why, and I need to take my own voice. I'll just step back. I'll step back and take my own advice. I don't disagree with you, but I think that Snooki is going to bring a nice different energy. Um, I also feel like maybe Polly D would have shit on Vinny too much. And Vinny is clearly mm. the star child of this right now, at least until we start to get to know these other people in the game. Um, he gets the card. He's the one reading off the explanations. He's sweating bullets. You can see <laughs> straight through his shirt at points. Um, God love him. He's trying his best. I then meet Fabio. Yeah. This man popped at least three champagne bottles in the first five minutes of this episode. And he is my spirit animal. Uh, shouts out Fabio. Snooki Shout said out. something about Fabio, and I was like, oh, is she calling him Fabio because he's like fabulous or whatever? But that's his name, and that's, that's incredible. That's his name. That's his name, yeah. Um, that was his name. That's what he did. That's what I appreciate. And here's the thing. We did see a lot of Fabio in this episode, and where I did, he was bringing the hype train. He was clearly told anytime anybody says anything – we need you guys to cheer. Yeah. And he took that advice to heart. He was just, he's like, yeah! Like every time <laughs> he is doing, he's at like level 110% of yeah. cheering for everything. And I appreciate that because that's what we're here for in All-Star Shore. Uh, yeah, he was definitely a woo girl, as you could oh. say. Um, I, I, He was Making nice little spins to it. At one point, he sounded like Mario. I thought Mario, like the plumber guy from the, you know what I'm talking about. I think we're aware what Mario, Mario you're is. referencing. <laughs> I don't think anybody is thinking of any other Mario. We're not thinking of Mario <laughs> Batali, the disgraced chef. I think when you say Mario, I think we're getting it. Okay. I'm just so excited. I don't know now, if it's coming yeah. across how excited I am. I am very excited. But he was given like wahoo, like ah, wah, wah, Woo. like that's Woo. how he, he, was, he was. It's a me. It's a me, Fabio. Fabio. <laughs> Pretty speech. Now we got it. Now we got to call him. It's a me. It's a me, a Fabio. But let's get into the first. I don't know if we call it a paradise game. This is what they did last year where they kind of had this random situation yeah. to get your partners, but it's not that random. And then weird twists come in for, again, no reason. No. And it was amazing. 
This time, they once again sent them back into the ocean, um, like they did last year. But instead of grabbing floaties, there were these, like, cages with bottles in them or something. It was something. I don't recall, <laughs> and and I don't recall for, I think, the reason you're already very clearly aware of, um, that I, I, took to, I took a look on our screener, because we have screeners, because we're awesome, Um we were six minutes in, and three nipples had been out at this point. <laughs> three nipples were out six minutes into this television show, and that's how you want to start a show. I, I mean, just again, it's so good. We had two girls give up swimming yeah, pretty much immediately. Like the horn sounded, and then two girls turned around and started walking out of the ocean. <laughs> They're like, why are we going to try? In their defense, they were correct. There was no reason for them to try. I agree. Would it have made more sense to just have the guys all go out, get these bottles, and then come back and open them in the order that was already in there? Mixie, here we go. We're, We're again questioning why they're doing these things. They did it because they knew three nipples were going to be exposed within six minutes of the first episode. Well, yes. And on top of it, Chantel running into the ocean had to be and was this week's. It's back! Pass of the week! of the week. Uh, it just, the ass of the week is made for All Star Shore. And yes. it will probably be Mixie's hardest thing yet she is like it's like when you played madden or a video game growing up and you'd always just be a beginner mix is like i want this on expert mode mm-hmm. and that's where we're at yes i mean like you said ass of the week was made for this television show it will be difficult for me to narrow it down i mean this shot out of the ocean i'm sure you all saw it i'm sure some of you paused and maybe took a screenshot and you know no judgment there because it was too like pillows that were dunked mm. in water and and then slowly the water was dri- I mean it was magnificent. It was a tough decision this week as it will be every week, but it is a cross I am willing to bear. I do it for you. Now, you. Chantel is very quickly becoming my favorite person on this show. She's amazing. She she's amazing. What was there a specific moment that you were like, "Oh, Chantel is going to be the best part of the show because i know what it was for me um yes actually it is and i wrote it down specifically i said this woman is an icon she doesn't even know that there are challenges in this show yes that that was very good that was very good (laughs) um it's like she didn't even bother to watch the other season that clearly was on and available to her to see what the show was (laughs) um for last year and that's what i respect out of her um while that might have been like the the cherry on top of that for Mm -hmm. me the the piece of cheesecake or carrot cake obviously to begin with can you pick something better than that those things carrot cake is not a cake first and foremost there's a vegetable inside it and not only is there a vegetable inside it there's chunks of vegetable inside it it is not a cake Secondly, cheesecake is disgusting. The name. It's, it's made called of cheese. Carrot it should cake. be an appetizer. It's called carrot cake. It's in the name. It what shouldn't do you want be in me the to name. Call it? it shouldn't what, what be in it? the name. What is it then? It should it should be it's carrot bread. It's just like banana bread. Why is it not called banana cake? I would have rather it been called banana cake and then carrot bread inserted. Those things should switch. It doesn't, you cannot sit here. Steven, tell me the difference between carrot cake and banana bread other than the vegetable and the fruit are switched. Uh, I like carrot cake. I don't like banana bread. That's the difference. Nope. That doesn't count because (laughs) I don't like either of them. (laughs) That sounds like you're letting your emotions get in the way of very sound logic. Do you think ice cream sandwiches are a sandwich? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, it's in yeah, the because it's in the name. Because it's in the name, like carrot cake. You've proved yourself incorrect. A How is that a sandwich? A sandwich 
has two things that are the same on the top and bottom and something different inside of it. A cake is made out of sugar and fruit and chocolate and things of that nature. Vegetables are not those things. Carrots are not those things. So you cannot sit here and tell me that it should be called a cake when there is vegetables in it. And okay, we can grind the carrots down all the way so that they are paste. Fine, but that's not how they make it. They put chunks of vegetable inside. It shouldn't be a cake, and I will die on this hill. Anyways, you were talking about cherries. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. The cherry on the uh, cheesecake or carrot cake, uh, for lack of a better term, because it's delicious, is the fact that in her little intro video on the beach, our girl went finger guns at us. And I was like, sold. (laughs) Sold. Say no more. I am in. You have giant fake boobies, and you are finger gunning me 10 minutes in the show. Both your tits have been out already. Let's fucking go. Let's go. They're allegedly fake. We don't know for sure. That they're yeah, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Okay. But she was amazing and continued to deliver throughout this icon. entire episode. Icon, icon, icon. It's just, again, a sign that the Brits have better reality stars than we do. That's all we. Uh, that's all I keep learning from All Star Shore. Yeah, there's also a clip of her online um, using a, a word that I personally love as well, but I mm-hmm. don't want to get us kicked off of of whatever platform we're on. So, yep. a see you next Tuesday. If see you, you next will. Tuesday. Yeah, with James Kennedy. Yeah, and she loves that word, and I I am with her on that. And it's a powerful, amazing word that should be used more often to describe people. Because it's a great word. But she goes on a beautiful rant about it on the All-Star Shore Instagram page. Highly suggest checking that out. Yes, please do that. But uh, finger guns back to you, my girl. Pow! (laughs) Um, So the guys all come out of the ocean because all of the girls quit or didn't get a bottle. Um, And we find out, again, for no good reason, there is a massive beer bottle um, on a spinner, and all of the girls have to stand around the spinner, and um, depending on what order the bottles were that the guys got, it told them when they could spin, and they got to get their partner, and they also were allotted a random amount of points. <laughs> yes. It seems to be in the order that they picked the bottles, but not picked the bottles. It was the order they spun the bottle. Um Really strange, like we're just giving you points to start. Okay, fair. Uh, again, not here to question anything you do. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to do it. Seems strange, but you guys know what you're doing, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back off on that. Uh, but yes, I love the idea of spinning the bottle, and then later they actually played spin the bottle, I believe, in, mm-hmm. re- in like back at the place, and it was like all picking, and everybody had an opinion of who they wanted and did not want. And everybody got who they did not want. And it was fantastic. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I also really loved the little detail. And this is something that we will touch on throughout All Star Shore. There are little details that they just do not let slip. And it is why, in my opinion, it is one of the greatest reality shows of all time. Because would it have been on brand for them to spin a bottle and it lands on someone and that's who they pick? Sure. But why don't we make it better? By squirting foam out of said bottle all over their face. This is why <laughs> you cannot tell me there's a better reality show on television. They they made people put the goggles back on <laughs> when they weren't wearing them when the bottle stopped. So there was a producer who's like, hey, can you put your goggles on? We basically have to like blast you in the face. And they're like, okay, hold on. You got it. Okay. Now act happy. Yay. All right. Now cue, cue the explosions. <laughs> cue the explosions. And it worked on two reasons. It's like, oh, yeah, pouring champagne. But it also worked mm. in the other reason. It did. And they do a great job of blurring those lines. Um, yeah. You know who else blurred those lines was our girl Issa. In her opening uh, shots where she was saying her name, she had no shirt on. She was running around holding her boobs. 
Why? Why not? Another icon. Another icon. <laughs> another absolute fucking icon that tells me again, everywhere else has better reality stars than we. Because you would think when we watched the challenge, Mixie, when we watched All Star Shore before, people were like, oh, I want to take this. I want to help my family. I want to buy a house. I want to do these things. Do you remember what our girl said? Or what uh, Issa said that she wanted to do with the money? Hmm. Hmm. Uh-huh. She said, I want to use the money for some plastic surgery. I want her to win. <laughs> I want her to win all of the money. I want her to take everybody else's money and just rebuild your body, girl. Go on. Have yourself a day. There is nothing better than the pure honesty of the people on this show. Like, yes! they aren't even trying. They just are who they are. And it's just the greatest. It tr- I, like, I keep saying it over and over again. And I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record. But when you are so passionate about reality television and you sit through show after show that just continues to fall short and everything's right there. And then you're given a gem called all-star shore things like this happen and it's deserved i'm so happy i'm just so happy i don't know if you guys can tell on youtube i feel like my (laughs) face hurts i've been keeping this in for days i watched this days ago and i've been like shaking trying to to not explode and tell everybody about this episode you guys know why i told her to to lead this season (laughs) yeah yeah isa is just amazing I agree with you. I want her to win for the plastic surgery. I want her to later on in the show kind of like start ranking the order of what she's doing. I want to know yes. every thought that she has about this plastic surgery and, you know, like, oh, we got second place. Now I can get my nose job. You know, yeah. I need I need this. I need 50000 for new tits. I need 25000 for a nose job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just listing off like, oh, well, if I get this, I yeah, that's exactly what I need. Also, love the honesty. She goes, I'm into boys and girls. And I'm like, well, you're making out with both, obviously, at some point this year. You might bang both of them. So we'll we'll get to see what, what happens. Speaking of people banging, mm-hmm. uh, Zavi, or is it Z- Zavi? I don't know how to say it. I apologize. I'll learn and grow. Yes. Zavi came on the screen and my first thought was Zavi's body count's like 2000, right? <laughs> this guy fucks, literally. This guy oh. definitely fucks. I was like, you know you see people especially like people of like Brazil and Argentina and you're like you're like they they, they are just so open. I was like, this guy fucks. <laughs> and I'm like this would be the guy that somehow would bring back somebody who's not on the show to the house and bang. And I was like, God damn it. I hope that I get what I want there. That would be amazing. They let them out. Yeah, they do let them out. Yeah. So maybe they will. That'd be so funny. I could totally see him coming back with like three three women and yeah. just like going into the smush room. Oh, Love it. that would be incredible. Um, we get our first glimpse at... Um, a potential rival to season one's Gigi and Blake, Tamaris and Vinny. Yes. What are our thoughts on this coupling? Um. Well, our poor boy Vinny, self-described, has no game. And mm-hmm. Vinny's been famous for a long time now. Yes. And the fact that Vinny has not grown his game because literally he all he has to do is like, I'm Vinny, concerns me. But (laughs) Tamaris is stunning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And she not only just like her face is perfect – but they show her in a bikini later, and I was like, Jesus Christ, Damaris. Yeah. My God, is she attractive. And then she brought a whip. She pulls out a whip from her suitcase. Of course she does. Of course. I, I, she's on Ulster Shore, so why would she not bring out a whip? You're totally right. Why would she not? Um, I think I shipped this couple. I'm going to give it another yes. episode or two. 
But I do think I'm into this couple. Vinny, I do want to touch on Vinny saying he has no game. While I agree that he has no game from what I saw, um, I do agree with his reasoning of being like, I'm surrounded by moms on this show and like yeah. everybody's married off, which I get. For me, it's almost hotter that he has no game. I understand that. But like that, he's saying that like he never goes outside when he's not filming. But I think he has game because he has no game. Oh, okay. You know I what see I mean? What you're well, he doesn't need it. He doesn't. Yeah. He acts like he's this little innocent thing, but he's a Chippendale. Uh, that is true. That so- is true. But he's like the hot guy that doesn't know he's hot, even though he knows he's hot. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think he's a handsome dude. I wouldn't see he's like chase hot. That's like different stuff. It's like when gr- when guys say there's girls who are hot and there's girls that are beautiful. There's a difference between those two different things, right? Yes, but Chase is Chase is hot, but he's a fuckboy. Right. I so mean, he's less attractive to me. Whereas Vinny could pro- probably is also a fuckboy, but he doesn't come across that way. He's diet fuckboy. Yes. Diet fuckboy. That is exactly what he is. And it it he hides it well, so you're so you might get fucked. You probably are gonna get fucked over. But he's cute about it and he's he's not good at it. So it's like endearing. Mm. He is not good at it. No. But in his defense, if there was a woman as attractive as Tamaris being like, Oh, you were like my TV crush and I like DM'd you or whatever they said at the beginning, and I saw that person in person and they were wearing that bathing suit and their body was like that. In fairness, I don't know how he's still alive. Yeah, I mean, she is fucking hot. <laughs> my God. And then that other girl's trying to hit on him. I was like, honey. Yeah, no. Um, Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> She's also beautiful, though, by the Melinda, way. Melinda, you absolutely- are very gorgeous, but I yeah. want to see these two people make out. So please get out of the way. <laughs> um, the th- other thing about Vinny is that he's such like a little dork like he had the sunglasses tan line already yeah. like as soon as they were there he already had a sunglasses tan line when they go to the paradise game he's wearing a tank top while all the other guys are like jacked the fuck out and running around topless he's just like a little bit of a dork and it's endearing and i just love Vinny. i i've always loved Vinny. he's always been my favorite from jersey shore and i just i'm so happy he's on this show um we get to melinda um, and she gets, uh, what was his name? Spanky? Spiker. Spiker. Spanky. Well, it's spanky now. It's Spanky now. <laughs> Do you know how this goes? It's Spanky now. She gets Spanky. From Warsaw Shore, you know what that means? He's, he knows Gabo. Oh my God. I didn't even, I didn't even connect the dots. Already a big Spanky fan then. We are two seasons into All Star Shore. <laughs> And Gabo has not been on. Where is Gabo? <laughs> now, they might have said you cannot bring your extracurriculars to All Star Shore. And he's like, I'm good then. <laughs> However, I think you make an exception. Yeah. I think we let Gabo bring whatever Gabo needs to Gabo it up. I want him to bring his DJing table <laughs> and whatever extracurriculars he might need. <laughs> okay. Season three, Gabo or bust. I love that. That's our that's our new stance. We got to make sure everybody knows that Gabo or bust. Um, Melinda gets the opportunity again. Why? Who knows? To change partners if she would like. Um, it will decrease her amount of points. Um, do they matter? Who knows? Um, but it will decrease her amount of points if she decides to do it. Now. She did it, and she switched and got Chase. Um, all of the girls wanted Chase. That was the big hoopla. Everybody wanted to be Chase's partner. He seems really stupid. So I don't think that I would have switched for him. I could have switched maybe for Vinny or um, Javi or whatever that other guy's name was. I'm so bad about this, guys. I'm sorry. I have it, I have it pulled up. Javi. I would have switched maybe for him, but... The switch to Chase 
seemed like a bad move. Of course it was. It was. Uh, you have instantly made everybody hate you in the house. Yes. You are now tied to Chase, the most quote unquote athletic looking dude in the house, which means anytime somebody has an opportunity to throw people in and make them lose the points, guess who they're throwing in now? You and him. And yes. now everybody's just like, look at her. Like, we did all this. You're going to change and take somebody's partner. And you're like, mm -hmm. we're all trying to have fun here. And you're like, come on. It was a bad move. She shouldn't have done that. It's gonna. That's going to haunt her. I don't think she gives a shit, but whatever. I agree with that either. She could give two fucks about doing that and fucking everybody over. Um, it does seem in this part I am excited about. There was a couple things missing from season one. I think... The main thing for me was any type of thought process or gameplay. There seems to be a couple. I don't want to generalize and say everyone, but a couple people, which is more than the one that was Blake last year, having some sort of strategy going into this game, which excites me. I feel like we're going to have some really stupid, drunken, like, ideas of how to approach the games yeah and i think it's going to be another layer of this show that's really going to pop the fuck off i i just i just want it all to be here already <laughs> and it, like it's it's here now but like we don't have it all uh even though it's in the the theme song um but we don't have it all yet and i'm just like okay i want it all now please give it to me all now and then like at the end of the episode, we do, we did not get the uh, the uh, exile exile no. game or whatever, and I was like, yeah, ah, god damn it, I want an exile game right now, and and I just remember last year us being like, every week we're like, we want the next episode now, mm -hmm. and like, I I've never needed another episode more than I need that. I just part of me wants to like not do this podcast. <laughs> and like wait till the season's over and then just have an entire weekend mm -hmm. where I just lay there and watch all of it in one go and enjoy it. But yeah. I know better than that because I will never get out of bed again. I'll be like, just take me now, Jesus. <laughs> it's not getting better. Take me, Jesus. I understand that one, but we will do it because it needs to be done. Um, we go to the house at this point. Fucking beautiful house. Unbelievable. Incredible. MTV said budget. <laughs> and they got them a fucking sick house. Not that the house last year wasn't good. This one just seems so much bigger. Um, Did you notice what was hanging? The shark. The shark is back. Disco shark. <laughs> Disco shark. We never got an explanation of what Disco shark meant last year. It just happened to be a shark. And it's back this year. So you know what? <laughs> Team Disco Shark. I want to see if I can go to Amazon and buy a Disco Shark. Oh, disco I would love a Disco Shark. Shark. Shark-shaped Disco Ball. Okay. I will continue to push this forward. Uh, I don't think they got it off Amazon. That's all I'm going to say at this point. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Moving on. Yeah. Um, the house is beautiful. I think that there's going to be a lot of insane fucking parties at this place. Again, we see Tamaris. She brings her whip out. And then we get, uh, you know, Tamaris and Vinny are having a little talk. Melinda is mad about this, but it doesn't really make sense as to why. She was like, why are they having a private conversation? Like, I don't know, because they're trying to fuck each other. Yeah. Also, they're teammates. What the fuck? Honestly, listen. Again, I should allow her to do things because she's hot. But but she's trying to do too much and be too much already. Yes. And I Clearly, she didn't watch last year mm -hmm. where I'm trying to remember her name. I see uh, her face. Yeah, where she tried to do the exact same thing out of the mm -hmm. gate. And, and mm -hmm. she just got excommunicated out of the house. Yeah. She is just trying too hard. And I was like, just pull it, just pull it back. We got a long season. Mm -hmm. Just pull it back. And yeah, she's trying to be like, well, I want to fuck him. And obviously I've seen her. So, yeah. you know, if it's between me and her, I don't know. I, I know that they're filling with some sort of drama, trying to make it exciting. I was just kind of like, really, that's the hill you're going to die on? Like yeah. that they're, they've taken each other to the side. 
So then she starts playing spin the bottle with everyone else. Um, and I will say, great gameplay move because we are now 18 minutes in and Issa is fully naked. Amazing. <laughs> Chase's face. I know. When, Chase is the new Blake with the face play. Yeah. <laughs> when it just came out, he's like, uh-huh. What, <laughs> what did I sign up for? I've been on these shows before, but this is something else. It's so funny to see people come from like Netflix or like a big ABC or something like that and come to an MTV show <laughs> where all the shore people are like, yeah, this is what we fucking do. Yeah, what do, you, what do you think we do? We just hang out and like talk to the cameras? No, yeah. we fuck. We get naked and we drink our face off. It just was so good. There was, again, now I will say the flip side to what I was saying before, which was I was excited about the gameplay. It does seem like a lot of people went to bed early the first night because they knew a game was coming. I really Smart. hope that this part of it goes away quickly because nothing is better than them having to go to Paradise Games super fucking hungover. <laughs> it's so good. It is so good to be able to, like, all the Americans were like, we're going uh-huh. to <laughs> We're going to bed. And the the international people are like, uh, what do you mean by that? Yeah. We We're had not going time to, bed. to rage. And we we're going to rage our face off. And our girl Chantel loses a toenail. Now, oh. how? <laughs> they like pulled Chase's bed out of the wall or something and it just ran her toe over. My, oh, God. It but- just. The way that it looked when they were bandaging it, I was like, that had to hurt like shit. But she was so unaffected by it. She was drunk off her ass. That's what makes it so good, though. Like, the fact that she was that drunk. Yeah. Night one, that she did not have, like, a visceral reaction to her entire toenail being ripped off of her toe. She was like, uh, this was a mistake going up there and doing that. We shouldn't have, I like how she was like, ah, we shouldn't have done that. We shouldn't have done that. I was like, no. Probably not. No, you should not have. So we continue on to the next day. The Americans wake up early, wake up all of the hungover uh, kiddos and kidettes, and they head to their first game. Now, Vinny at one point hears the air horns and says, is Polly D here? Sir, I Sir. think you meant to say is the right reality here? And you bet your fucking ass we are. Fucking here, baby. Right here, my guy. Right here. Where do you think we would be, my guy? Not this is here? Shit, Vinny. Welcome yeah. to it. They explain the first challenge. Um, A combination of, I don't know who read the card. I think it was Ma- Marina or something. Somebody maybe. Um, Somebody read it. Who knows? And Snooki tried to fill in the gaps. When they explained this first game, I had a TJ moment where I was like, huh? Yeah. What? What are we doing? <laughs> We're going to do, huh? We're yeah, Okay. Like, you confused me <coughs> and had me at foam party. Yes. Yes. And I was like, uh, okay, foam party, sign me up for that. <laughs> Um, uh, because I tried to go to one phone party in college. One. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They had it at a bar. And let's just say after the first year that they did these, they were not allowed to do them again <laughs> legally. Yeah. Same thing happened at my college, except for they weren't allowed to do them at bars. So instead, they illegally did them in the basement of fraternity houses. Oh, that sounds real safe and it was real, like super safe and really good. Yeah, all the women must have been really safe and really were taken care of in that situation. Yeah. Well, absolutely, and yeah. you know, it was very important that they did it in the middle of winter in Ohio, oh, yeah. Yeah. and the dress code was swimwear. Yes. Yeah. yeah because yeah. it had to have. In. Well, because then you wouldn't want to leave. You'd want to stay there, which is yeah. safe. Yes, because really it was safe. smart. It yeah, was yeah, very yeah. safe. Yeah. Um, no foam party at my college lasted longer than an hour because the police would find out about it immediately mm. and shut it down. But I went to two. One I don't remember, but I think I have a photo, and the other one I do remember being dragged out of it. So oh, that's good. 
Firecracker mix stories are also going to be coming with the uh, All Star Shore because it always brings it back to me. Dragged out for safety, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, the one we were in line for, and I wasn't sure. I was like, I don't think this is my scene. This is not what I'm going to do. And I was like, we just got to, like, we got to go. We got to experience this. Mm -hmm. um, we were in line for about 30 minutes and we were slowly making progress. You see people come out, they're like, my God, that was so much fun. And then we just see a bunch of people coming out at one time. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, maybe it's a big group of people. Maybe they're all, maybe a group of 50? Well, it's just a big group of 50 friends. No, no, they weren't friends. Everybody had to leave because somebody threw up in the foam. And they just threw everyone out. And they did also find someone on the floor in the foam. <laughs> Um, that had gone missing earlier in the evening, apparently. <laughs> and I guess, you know, at that point, foam party, vomit on the floor in the foam, and a person just passed out in the foam does not make for a safe environment for a business to potentially get <laughs> sued over. So that was the first and only time I tried to go to a foam party. Yeah, we will throw a right reality foam party. Uh, oh my god! When we hit a million subscribers, mark my words. <laughs> we'll see you when we're sixty. <laughs> um, so he, they explain, you know, the the paradise game, and I'm like, a puzzle. If I know MTV and the challenge and their puzzles, I was like, is this gonna be difficult? Is this gonna require skill no immediately no. once it started it was not hard it should have taken five minutes it did not it, it did not take five minutes at all not it was at embarrassing all. how long it took specifically mr big big fucking muscles and melinda to make their puzzle and they still didn't come in last because of the second half of the situation. Our girl, Marnie, who is also a Brit, who's got a, another great accent. And, you know, we love accents. We love banter. Banter. If you take one thing away from this podcast and this show, it's I want you to remember that Marnie said that she thought she was more athletic until yesterday's competition. She said that to somebody. She goes, I thought I was more athletic until yesterday. Then I remembered... Marnie was one of the women who swam 20 feet and stopped because her tit came out. And I'm like, girl, you went 20 feet. You stopped. And you're like, nah, fuck it. You thought you were more athletic based off that? You're not showing me anything. That was, I was like, ah, uh, Marnie. Marnie's a favorite of mine, too. Put her in that Brit basket and let me just hang out with him. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so fucking good. Um. One of the amazing lines from our girl Chantel was she said she didn't know what the word strategy meant. There's no strategy, I think. We just have to do it. That's it. <laughs> I don't know what strategy means. <laughs> how do you go through life? Like, I, I truly want to understand. How do you go through life and not know that? I don't have an answer. <laughs> I can't even fake make anything up for you. I just don't have an answer and I, I i didn't believe it until you know when somebody you're like oh you're fucking with me and then they like look at you for a second and then you're like oh you're not fucking with me yeah. she did that to her partner and he's like really and she's like and he's like oh and then he starts laughing uh-huh you know strategy is it <laughs> it's the same language am i supposed to believe brits don't talk about the word strategy it's not brought up anywhere that there's a fun other word for strategy. Guess what? Not that I'm aware of. And my dad's from England. So I don't think there was another word for it, honey. It is making me start to think that maybe we need to make a segment of our podcast and call it What Does Chan Chantel Not Know Today? Oh, I she love it so much. She didn't know there was, there was challenges. Okay. She didn't know what the word strategy meant. I feel like we got to kind of start compiling this because yes. it's truly a work of art. Okay. If you want us to have that segment, I need at least five comments on YouTube this week. Five comments on YouTube. 
or if you're listening on Spotify and you're just like, I don't want to click on YouTube, there's like a QA thing I guess you can do, which oh. I'm not aware of. I've gotten like emails sometimes like somebody responded to your episode. I was like, whatever. So we, we need <laughs> at least five to say yes. And if we get five, we will make a sounder for that segment. I like that. Okay. I like so that. Five comments across the platforms. It does not count if you post it in the hotties. So hotties, you need to go over there. And I'm not looking at all of you that are hotties that may have not subscribed on YouTube yet. <laughs> that said you might might subscribe, but you haven't yet. Not that I get notifications about that. But that's fine. That's not a conversation. It's not part of this combo. Nah, nah, we need five. So we need five. And you get your sounder. And we have a new segment every week. I think that it is needed. Um, the big drama of this um, Paradise game was the missing B. And so good. So incredibly good. The edit of the missing B. The camera work of them <laughs> panning down to the B in the sand and not getting caught by anyone else on the show. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, this show wins an Oscar for cinematography immediately because of this segment. It was incredible. I do feel bad. Do you yes. think it was unfair? No. I don't care what you say. It's all so sure. <laughs> Nothing is fair. It's all so sure. At one point, some people are going to be stepping and walking around and poop. Okay? That's fair. That's fair. I'm not saying that it just, you know, it kind of broke me a little because it was the pure panic. Yeah. And the screaming at each other. Oh, God. And just, like, foam everywhere. The <laughs> thought of, like, people, like, coming out and being serious, covered in foam. Like, mm -hmm. I still can't find it. It's just, it's it's <laughs> great. They're like, where is it? And it's, like, right there where they dropped it earlier. Ah, it's, it's, it's too good. It's just, it's just too good. Iconic. Um. We end the episode with uh, Vinny and Tamaris. Um, I'm already forgetting names. Sorry, guys. I'll get there. Um, we end the episode with Vinny and the Whip Girl uh, one. So yep. they will be selecting who is going into Exile Game. Um, I have a feeling already that they're going to need to change teams around. <laughs> there seems <laughs> to be a massive... <laughs> no. Um, of mass no. no. No, we're not doing that again. I it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. You want to know why? Be <laughs> because I already know w what happens on one of the episodes cuz it's spoiled in the season thing. Oh, yeah, they did in the like the season review. Yeah. They said one of the exiles they're going to switch partners, but that's not a full team swap. Okay. That I think I needs to happen. <laughs> Already after episode one, I want the teams to stay the same because I need a level of competition that can probably be done by two to three teams, and then I need everyone else to just be terrible at things because <laughs> I want both. And if we match it up to try to make it like competitive all the way across, then we're not going to get good stuff like a team not being able to flip a cup for like 20 minutes, you know, totally. That's I, that's what I want. That's I hope we still get things like that. Oh, we will. Foam on the face. The B has dropped next to the board and them <laughs> running around for 20 minutes and them coming in last. I need more of that. Yes. I also, again, Asterix uh, MTV. We've talked about this before. We will talk about it again. We will continue to talk about it. Give me a timestamp on the bottom. Yeah. I need to know how long that B was in the sand. It's a must. It makes it funnier. And you know what? It's All Star Shore. Make it up. Who gives a shit? Yeah, I, it doesn't even need to be real. Yeah, just be like twenty minutes, or like give me, give me the SpongeBob thing. Yes. Two hours later, just something. It makes Snooki something say like that. It makes Snooki yeah. say two hours later. Hilarious. Snook could have been like, I could have got drunk and sobered up by now. Something like that. Mm hmm. Again. Let us help you produce this show. For free. We're giving it to you for free. Free. <laughs> we get back to the house. Um, there seems to be some sort of something going on with um, 
chase and Tamaris. It kind of seemed random that that whole situation happened. Um, but Melinda sees it as a great opportunity to fuck over um, Vinny and Tamaris's strong bond. So yes. she encourages Chase to basically f- be a fuckboy with Tamaris. Yeah. Um, I don't think sh- Tamaris is going to go for it. They want you to believe that, don't they? They want you to be like, oh, maybe, maybe there's hope for Melinda. Maybe there's hope. But then I would just be like, "Oh yeah, there she is again in the bikini." I'm, I got it. I'm, I'm back on, I'm back yeah. on. Th- again, not that Melinda is not attractive, but like in comparison, I, I just, I, I, I don't see it working out for Melinda. And no. sorry, but not gonna happen. I think for Tamaris, this is like the perfect case scenario for Tamaris. She's like, yeah. Vinny's kind of like my vibe. He's my guy. Like I find him attractive. Like he's well known. Like it. it you're right. It kind of seems like a very good prote- potential for a Blake and Gigi situation. Mm-hmm. And if we get two solid couples out of this, <laughs> and like the last five seasons of Bachelor have give us none, nothing. Christ, sign me the fuck up. Again, greatest reality show of all time. Um, They then go into a toga party. Hey, Temptation Island, take notes. This is a real theme. Yeah. The toga party, toga, 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 again, brought me back to Firecracker Mix. Togas were great parties. Um, I went to one freshman year, and a photo is here. A little little baby Firecracker Mix. Look at baby Firecracker Mix. Baby Firecracker Mix. Um... This is when I was first realizing the spark inside. You can see me hiding a beer because I am underage. Um, This is what partying is meant to be. You wear a bed sheet outside as an outfit and you black out. And this just brings such good fond memories to me. And I just... Like, this is... This show is just so all-encompassing. Yes, it is. You know? Yeah. It brings you to the best times of your life when you were, when you took the sheets off of your dorm bed that definitely probably had cum on it, and you tied it around Jesus your body, <laughs> and you went outside on a Thursday. Probably definitely had cum, on it. <laughs> and that's that's what this country was okay. built on. <laughs> and that's okay. And that is what learning and growing and becoming an adult is about. It's doing it's exactly what you stuff. said. Yeah. It's not washing your sheets and being like, how much cum is on this? You know, it's like, <laughs> whatever. Okay. That's what All Star Shore is about. All Star Shore is about tapping into all the possibilities that reality television can and should be. It's what all the shows once were before they were like, well, maybe if we t- produce it more. No. You get all these. <laughs> psychopaths together yeah, uh-huh. who just want to drink and fuck mm-hmm. and you just go go here's yeah. the alcohol yeah you want to win random points while you're doing it sure yeah. <laughs> and you just hope the worst that happens is somebody's toenail comes off and that's all star shore um <laughs> and, that's, and that's all star shore <laughs> and you have at least five to seven nips out an episode because that's what i counted We cannot do it justice, guys. Go watch the episode. I wonder how much they cut out from what we saw. I'm sure not anything. They can't. Um, I would honestly say a fifth of the episode, something was blurred. So good. It's so, like, it ruins other television shows for me. I can't watch other reality TV. And this is probably why the challenge has taken a massive slide for me in comparison. Because you watch this and you're like, oh. This is the show that I actually want the challenge to be. And the challenge was. The challenge was that. And the challenge was. Back in the day, the challenge was that. Yes. And and now we have All Star Shore to fill that void. Yes. Um, Yeah. Something happened towards the end of this episode that I really need to make sure we touch on because. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is the TVMA part of the program. (laughs) No, I'm before that. Oh, Okay. It was reminding me of when Vanjie said he had never played flip cup before. It was equivalent oh. to that to me. 
Melinda says, dead serious, she has never seen a beer bong before. Honestly, how are you here? That made me the most mad. That's the most mad I've gotten at anything that girl has said. How do you not know what a beer bong is? You cannot come to All-Star Shore and not know what a beer bong is. I feel like she lied on her application because that's clearly got to be on the All-Star Shore application. How many beer bongs did you do this week? I and would she think was just so. Like, um, I don't know what that is. I'm going to say four. You know, I feel like that's what that made. That also made me angry. It made me okay, more good. angry than realizing none of the people outside the U.S. knew what a toga party was. Yes. Also that. What do you mean a toga party? They're like, you don't know what a, you don't know what a toga party is? And they're but like, this is how we bridge the gap. You know, this is the olive branch to everyone else. You know, we teach them about toga parties. For some reason, they need to teach Melinda about a beer bong. Were you good at beer bonging? Did you like beer bonging? Uh, I did a few. I would okay. say to me, it 100% depended on the beer that was in the bong. Okay. I'm going to agree with that. Yes. Myself. And when I say what beer was in the bong, I used to bong champagne. Holy shit. I used to take an entire bottle of Andre's champagne, fill up a beer bong, and then oh, beer bong it. I remember you saying this early in the podcast days. Podcast yes, I you. think I did say that. tell the story. I, that was like my wow. pregame go-to, was me and all of my friends would each get a bottle of Andre before we even went like to the pregame in the dorm room, <laughs> oh, filled no. up a beer bong, completely emptied the Andre's bottle of champagne because we had a huge one and just took it to the face. And that's how you live. <laughs> and that's what I call living. Write that down in your book. <laughs> and I think that's why I'm so good at uh, bonging like the white claw that I bong. Yeah. for Because I can Devin. take that those bubbles for unknown reasons. I can take it. I think I started young. People are like, oh, don't drink till you're 21. I don't know. It's It worked I out trained. for me just fine. I trained. Look at me. Leading the number one podcast for the challenge and all-star sure. I mean, what a, what more could you want? Yeah, that is a remarkable feat of beer bonging an entire bottle of champagne. Something that made me violently ill just then, uh, as you were explaining that, was me thinking about the idea at this point in my life, at 39 years old, that you would be, or anybody, or like me trying to do any of this now, that you would, one, do a beer bong. <laughs> Just on the face of it, makes me ill. Okay. Two, that that was before the pregame. <laughs> I couldn't do a pregame now. I can't even really do a game. So to do a pregame for the pregame and then game. and the See, but this was firecracker mix. This was a different person. This was not, this is not who you're seeing right now. This, that was a different person. I will say, I can't pregame anymore like that, but I do think that I could, <laughs> I do think I could still beer bong an entire bottle of Andre Champagne. If we get a hundred comments, a <laughs> hundred comments on YouTube. I feel confident in it, honestly. She does it next week. I will. I'll do it. We need a hundred comments on YouTube to get it. Now, here's the thing, but I'm also going to say I need 50 new subscribers, too. Oh. I need 50 subs on YouTube. I think this is a big ask. <laughs> it's a big ask. But you know what? I think our audience is big enough. I think they can do it. And I'm not saying that I know... Members of your family have different Gmail accounts. That you could go onto YouTube and subscribe under both and comment under both. I'm not saying I know that. But free advice. Free advice. And we end the episode in the most oh. Jersey Shore way possible. The man with the greatest mustache I have ever seen. Is ever seen. Gu gooey? Gi. Guy? Gi? Gi. I think it's Gi. Gi. I apologize. Gi, Ma magic mustache man. Gi, out of nowhere is interested in Issa. And we find out about this like 30 seconds 
before the end of the episode. And then we end the episode with the most graphic Jesus. fucking I have ever seen on television. Ever. It, she was yelling. The entire house knew it was happening. People were laying around them. It was un... The, just the idea that they showed... <laughs> If it doesn't get pulled on YouTube, it's playing right now. Him doing this with his underwear. Yeah. Uh-huh. To, like, we all know <laughs> what is what he's doing that for. And they're just like, hey, it's MTV. It's nine o'clock at night. Yeah. Fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> we can't say the word fuck on MTV. Uh-huh. But we can clearly show him pulling his dick out for his D to be s Yeah. I mean- he fucked her. We can't <laughs> say the word fuck, but he fucked her for sure. Oh, the, yeah. The thing, the, this is so layered for me. The fact that, like, this entire episode, they're like, oh, is, is Vinny going to go for Tamaris or is he going to yeah. go for Melinda and all this stuff? We get a five second explanation of Magic Mustache Man being into Issa, and then the next shot is them fucking. Like, absolutely no buildup, no information of it. He's like, hey, I like you. She's like, I like you too. Boom, we are fucking. We are fucking aggressively. I'm drunk. You're pretty drunk. I like to fuck. You like to fuck. What are we waiting for, basically? is kind Come of take I a thought. ride on this mustache, ma'am. Oh, my God. And they went to town. She was enjoying it clearly. <laughs> and I just like all the Americans in the house. The Brits, the other people, unfazed. <laughs> unfazed. They're just like. Yeah. Okay, good night. <laughs> Same shit as always in a shore house. But everyone else is like, Hold on, are they in your bedroom? He's like, yeah, they're in my bedroom. I'm in here because they're like obliterating, obliterating each other's bodies currently. I mean, we can hear it, you know? And Ugh. what somebody was like, oh, it must be really stuffy in there or like uh-huh. the stench from there has to be <laughs> incredible. And everybody knows, they're like, yeah, it's probably, yeah, he's going to do it. And I they, think, was it was it Melinda? Was it Melinda or? There was one, one of the girls was just like, oh my, oh my, what, what, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> the funniest thing to me about all of this is like, they hadn't even opened up the room, like the fuck room that they have. Yeah. That we know that they have. They The production couldn't even get that ready in time for the fucking to start happening. We had that ready. We just we're waiting for the comforter. Can you guys like just give me like two hours? Nope. Okay, See, you can go fuck now. I guess we thought Amazon Columbia would have better prime shipping, but they didn't. So, <laughs> or the idea is they clean out a production room to make that because they're going to be banging so often that they're like, we need the other people to sleep. We need them to be able to sleep. I I give them enough credit that they have it. Maybe they're going to make a second one. They might need more than Ooh. one. Two smush rooms. Ugh. It's like the episode of The Office. There'll be a masturbation room, a gay <laughs> masturbation room, a light groping room, right? Yeah. All the things. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then a cry room for the people that worked for Jimmy Fallon. Um, oh, okay. Unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> but then the episode just ends. They yeah. did a preview of the rest of the season, which was uh, just got my dick so hard. But you Okay. Okay. That time to drink water. Uh huh. Um, but the fact that they just ended the episode of like aggressive fucking, and then that's it. Of just, course. Again, best show I- on I'm going to do my very best to not overly uh, just throw compliments on this show, and I will get over it hopefully by episode three. But for right now, tell your friends if you're yeah. listening to this and you're not watching it guys i'm i'm telling you i would not be this passionate and animated about something that i did not believe to my core is going to go down in history as one of the greatest reality shows of all time i know there are people who are probably like well i don't know any of the people on the show like i don't doesn't matter exactly doesn't matter do- does doesn't matter that doesn't keep you from watching other reality shows where you don't know who the people are didn't stop us from loving the shit out of temptation island mm-hmm. you know what i mean so take a risk take a gamble listen we talked to Gigi and blake last year go check out that interview if you haven't already 
they talk in depth about how great it was to be on this show because there is no overproduction. They really do just let these people be themselves and you can truly see it on the show and it makes it so fucking good. That is why we love it. That is why we're going to be here every fucking week to recap it. Are we still doing the Challenge USA? Yes. Should we not be doing both of these at the same time? Probably. We will not have a life. But it doesn't matter because this show is so good. So go check it out. MTV, Paramount Plus. Go watch. Let them know. Tweet at them. Be like, hey, Right Reality told us to watch yes. it. Yeah. Right Reality told us to be here and be here for this. That's what we're here for. And, and did MTV and Viacom and Paramount, were they like... Uh, how do we get the right reality again? How can we just get them? I know. We're going to put it on the same night as the challenge is currently airing. <laughs> and we're going to put it up against Golden Bachelor and Bachelor of Paradise. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. They did that. It's fine. It's that. fine. It's fine. At least we have it. It's here. Thank God. Thank God it's back. We will not. Beggars cannot be choosers. That's Thank true. you guys for checking out this episode with us. Again, if you are just listening, go to our YouTube. Subscribe. Leave a comment. Do you want me to bong sh- champagne or not? Can you imagine? I'm trying to give the people what they want. Yeah. Check us out on Apple Podcasts. Leave a review. We've had a lackluster appearance in reviews. Not going to point fingers, but you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you. How dare you? Listening and not giving a review or not following us on all platforms. How dare you? Yeah. And you can follow us on all the platforms. And you can join the hotties, the Facebook page. Link in the description. We have a ball in there. Yeah, we talked very specifically today about whether a guy fucked the jello. And you know what? It was important. It was important things to discuss. Whether a man made a jello mold in his hotel bathroom and fucked its mouth. It's important. Check it out. We will be back with the Challenge USA and again with the next episode of All-Star Shore. So keep it locked on the right reality. We love you and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye Bye-bye, everybody.